Okay, great. This is lesson four of uh, chapter three. Okay, so chapter three on lesson four, slope intercept form. We just did uh, direct. <coughs> we just did the form for direct variation, which is y equals to mx. Now, today we are learning how to do the slope-intercept form, okay? So, you need to know what is the y-intercept. You need to know what is the slope-intercept. You need to know all the vocabulary we have learned from lesson one of this book to now. That means lesson one in chapter uh, one up to here. So, lesson one, chapter one, chapter two, all the lessons we have learned in all these chapters. All the vocabulary you should be able to use over here okay all right so let us start what is the slope intercept form it is an equation of a straight line or it is an equation um, it is a linear equation sometimes you can say linear equations yeah so straight line means linear so I can say it is an equation of a straight line or it is a linear equation. Okay? And we know linear, um, linear graphs or lines, straight lines, are either horizontal, diagonal, up, diagonal down, and vertical. Okay? It is an equation that shows a linear non-proportional relationship. Okay? It is an equation that shows a linear non-proportional relationship. That means when I divide y with x for all my points, I will not get the same number. When I divide, when... I divide uh, y and x for all my points, I will not, I will not get the same number. I will not get the same number. That's what a linear non-proportional relationship is, okay? It is a line, but it is not proportional, okay? That means it does not start at zero, zero. Majority of the time, most of the time, yes. All the time. Mm, majority of the time. It means it does not start at zero, zero. It doesn't start at the origin. Sometimes, not always, because you'll see. It is written in this form. As long as you see these three parts, the Y, four parts, the Y, the equal, the MX, and the B together with the sign. Don't just take the B. You have to take the B together with the sign in front of it. Okay? So M is the slope, the number with X is the slope, and the number that is being added or subtracted is called the Y-intercept, or it is called B. Are we together? So another name for Y-intercept is B. Another name for B is Y-intercept, okay? So if I ask you to find the B, I am asking you to find the Y-intercept. If I ask you to find the one intercept, I am asking you to find the B. Okay? All right, let's continue. We need to know what is the meaning of this Y intercept. What does it mean? Okay? So the Y intercept, it is the point. It is a point. That means you'll find on the graph. Okay? So if it is a point, that means it is a number. Because on the graph, we use numbers. Yes? So... It is the point where the line crosses the y-axis on a coordinate plane. 
This is your Y axis. Yes. This is your X axis. X axis. Y axis. The Y intercept is found over here. This is where you find the Y intercept. On this line. There is only one Y intercept for every equation. There cannot be two Y intercepts in one equation. Only one. The only one Y intercept. So because I said it is the. The means one. It is the point and I must find it over here on the graph. On the Y axis. It is a number. That means it can be an integer. It can be positive, negative, and zero. Okay? It can be a decimal or a fraction. It is written as an ordered pair, like this. Zero first, this zero must be there. When you're writing the y-intercept, you must put zero over here. And then the number that represents b. In some books, they just write one number for b. Okay? But the correct way for you to write the y-intercept is to write it as a point. Okay? All right. The equation of a straight line. How do you write it? So, because it's diagonal up, it means my slope is positive. My slope is positive. My y-intercept can be either positive or negative. My... So... My slope is positive, my y-intercept can be either, can be either positive, can be either positive or negative. So let us write an example, negative, okay? So I can write y equals 3x minus 7. My slope is positive. That means my line is going up. I can write it as a decimal, 0.6x plus 5. My slope is positive. That means the line will be a diagonal going up. It can be a fraction. Y equals to 1 third x plus or minus, okay, plus 10. Or y equals to 2 over 5, 2 fifths x minus 7. There. These are all equations of diagonal going up. Diagonal going down, the slope is negative. The y-intercept, the y-intercept the y-intercept is either positive or negative. So I want to write an example. I will write y equals negative 2x plus 7 y equals negative one half my x minus four so i have a negative slope see i have a negative slope but my y intercept is either positive or negative it can be a decimal y equals to negative 0 0.9 x plus 12 like that Horizontal, the slope is zero. The slope is zero. Okay? The y-intercept, the y-intercept is either positive or negative. Okay, so y equals to negative 4. 
I don't have a number with x, so that means my slope is 0. This is my y-intercept. y is equals to 1 fourth. I don't have a number with x, that means my slope is 0. y equals to 0 0.13. I don't have a number with x, that means my slope is 0. The vertical line, the equation is written as x equals a number. So x equals 0 0.6. You don't see the y because in the vertical line, it does not cross the y-axis. This equation... This equation will never have y because the line, because the, sorry, because the, because the line crosses crosses only the x-axis, only the x-axis. It doesn't cross the y-axis. It does not cross the y-axis. Okay? So when you see an equation written x equals, it means it's a vertical line. All these three start with y equals. You see? y equals, y equals, y equals. The only one that starts with x equals is the vertical one. Okay. All right. So you will be given equations. They will tell you, state the slope and the y-intercept of a graph of the graph of the equation so what does this mean it means you are given an equation and then you choose from the equation what number represents the slope and what number represents the y-intercept you need to give me two things a number for slope and a number for y-intercept so how do i know the slope the number with x so, slope for this one is just negative 4. There is your answer. Y-intercept, I don't see it. It is 0. My y-intercept is 0. I just write it like that. Or the correct way of you writing should be 0, 0. And you put it in bracket and you close your box just like that let's do this one my slope which is m is one eighth one out of eight it is a number i should not see x inside your box for slope okay this is y intercept which equals to 10 and you box or you can write it as 0 comma 10 and you box it just like that okay slope here is negative 1 out of 14 because you take the number with the sign you take the number with the sign the y-intercept is negative 60 or you can write it as 0, comma, negative 60. And you box it. Here, the slope is 0. Because there is no number with x. The y-intercept is 15. Or you can write it as 0, comma, 15. And you put it in the box. Let's do this one. Slope. Another name for slope is M. Is equals to who? 
the number with x, the coefficient of x. The y-intercept, y-intercept is 0 0.36 or 36 hundredths, 0 comma, 0 0.36. I forgot my bracket. There should be a bracket. When you're writing a point, you use a bracket, okay? All right, this one. The slope is undefined. Slope is undefined. Undefined. I said when it starts with X, it's a vertical line. And when it's a vertical line, it is undefined. Slope is undefined. And then there is no Y-intercept. There is no y intercept because the line does not cross the y axis and that's what you write that's how you explain this. The slope is undefined and there is no y-intercept because the line does not cross the y-axis. What is the slope here? Slope for this question is negative 0 0.7. Sorry, just put it in the box because it's not a point. Okay, the y-intercept the y-intercept for this question is negative 9 or 0, comma, negative 9. Okay, now we come here. Aha! Uh -huh. What happened? I have y with somebody. Y should be by itself because the equation should be y equals to y equals to mx plus b there should be no one with y y should be by itself so now that y has somebody i draw my bridge i need to move positive six to this side i will subtract six on both sides this will go away so now i have y equals to negative six minus 5x okay so this is my slope the number with x is my slope the number by itself is my y-intercept so slope equals negative 5 my y-intercept is equals to negative 6 or 0 comma negative 6 and then I put it in a box, just like that. Okay, then I do this one. This one is okay, because y is by itself. But now I don't see a number in front of x. I have to put a number here. So this is 1. So my slope is, slope is 1. My y-intercept is 0 0.24 positive because the sign in front of it is positive or 0 comma 0 0.24 and let's do this one i don't see a number in front of x i put it so this goes together like this and then the other one is the y intercept so slope is negative one Y intercept is negative 2. What do I want to do? Or 0, comma, negative 2. All right. So here, Y is with somebody. Okay. So this somebody is 9X. 9X has to go on this side of the equal sign. 
I'm going to draw my bridge. This is positive 9x. There is no sign over here. I will minus 9x on both sides. This becomes 0. What am I left with? Negative y is equal to negative 9x minus 5. Now, there is no number in front of y. I will put a negative 1. So negative 1y is equals to negative 9x minus 5. Okay? Y should always be positive. Y can never be negative. This y should always be positive. So I will divide by negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. I divide everything by negative 1. If this was negative 3, I would divide negative 3 here, negative 3 here, negative 3 here. So this goes away because a negative divide a negative is a positive. Negative 9 divide negative 1 is positive 9x. Negative 5 divide negative 1 is positive 5. So now my slope is 9. My slope is 9. My y-intercept is 5. Just like that. This one is okay. Why? Because y is by itself. It's just that they switched like they did commutative property. They changed the order. So the number with x is this one. So slope equals negative 17.9. And my y-intercept is 6.24 or 0, 0,6.24. Remember the y-intercept the y-intercept is a point on the y line, on the y-axis. And let's do one. We have fractions. So this one is okay. So this is my slope right here. So slope is equals to a negative 2 over 7. And then my y-intercept is negative 5 over 4. Box your answers. How else can you write your y-intercept? 0, comma, negative 5 out of 4. All right, we are here. Oh, this is okay because y is by itself. So my slope is 5 over 2. And my y-intercept is everything with my number here. My number with the sign. So y-intercept is negative 19 over 8. You can leave it as an improper fraction. You don't have to... Change it. Negative 19 over 8 or 0, comma, negative 19 over 8. Excuse me. Then you box your answer. Okay. So that's how you do this. So they will give you an equation. From the equation, you should tell them what is the slope, what is the y-intercept. Remember, the sign in front of your number is very important. Remember, y should always be by itself. Remember, y should always be positive. Okay, so those are the three things you need to remember. The sign, the sign in front of your number Uh, y should be by itself. Y should be by itself. And Y should be positive. Always. Y should Y should be positive. Let me put my phone down a little bit. Okay.
Y should be positive. Y should be by itself. Put an I over here. Y should be by itself. So these three things you should remember when you see an equation and they want the slope and the y-intercept. All right. Okay. Then they will tell you to write an equation of a line in the slope-intercept form. That means y equals to mx plus b. That's how we should look. When, they, when the question gives you the slope and the y-intercept. So the question has given us the slope is negative 15 and the y-intercept is positive 2. So I will write y is equals to negative 15x plus 2. And that's my answer. When m is 7, that means slope is 7 and b is negative 9. That's y-intercept. y is equals to 7x minus 9. When the slope is one third x and the y intercept is zero, y is equal to just one third x. You don't have to write the y intercept if it is zero. Okay? So that's how you do that. All right. Then they will give you a story. You must know how to read. You must know which words mean the, uh, means um, y intercept and what words mean slope. You must know. Reading is important here, very important. In all the questions we have done, you must know how to read. All right, let's read this one. To rent a car, you must pay a deposit, okay, of 150 AED and 65 AED for each day. Just because I saw for each day, this is my slope. Because they said for each day. So that's slope. If that is slope, this is y-intercept. Deposit. You pay fast. You give the person money fast. Okay? So this is positive. So how do I write my equation? Y is equal to 65x plus 150. So if I want to go for three days with the car, I will multiply 65 by three, plus I had the deposit that I paid before they gave me the car. So before they give me the car, I need to give them 150 dirham. Once I give them 150 dirham, then I need to pay for each day I took the car, which is 65 dirham. So if I take for 10 days, I would have paid 150, and then 65 times 10, which is 650. So all together, I should pay how much? What is 650 plus 150? That should be almost 800. 800 dirham. Okay? And let's read this one. Aisha climbed a sliding deck that was 5,000 meters high. So the sliding deck. It has stairs. There is stairs over here. Okay, and they say from here to here is 5,000. From here to here is 5,000 meters. Okay, and it is a sliding deck, so you're sliding. And how do you slide? You slide down. No one ever slides up. And slid into the pool. That means that's negative because she's going down 6 meters per second. That is my slope. And because I'm sliding into the pool, this would be negative six. Okay? All right. So my equation would be y equals negative six x plus 5,000. 5, I started up here. That's 5,000 high. So that's positive. But I am going down because I'm sliding into the pool. Okay. Layla bought a candle that was seven inches tall. Okay. Seven inch candle. That burns. Burns is a negative word. At a rate, rate of. That's my slope. So this is my Y intercept. This was our Y intercept here. All right. 
so then y equals i can do this as 7 minus 2x or i can also write it as y equals to negative 2x plus 7. remember commutative property even this one you can start with the y-intercept and then the um slope okay all right mustafa owes owes means what a negative you owe somebody that means you have some something of somebody's it is not yours okay so mustafa owes the bank five hundred five thousand eight hundred ninety seven 5,897 dirham. That means Mustafa took the bank's money. So since he took the bank's money, it does not belong to him. It is negative. So he decided that he each week, each week, this is a slope. These are words for slope. For every week, he will deposit 12, oh, 12, 1,200 and five dirham okay deposit is a positive word okay so this is my slope this is my slope this is my y intercept so this is y equals positive 1205 x minus how much five thousand eight hundred ninety seven 897 make sure you use your commas when you're writing your numbers and there is your equation all right salma has seven million eight hundred and ninety thousand dirham in her bank account each week she deposits each week she deposits so this means this is her slope and if this is her slope this is her y-intercept. So, she has, so that means this is positive. It is her money. This money belongs to Salma, so that is positive. And then each week she deposits, that means she's adding more money to the account. So that is positive. So both of her numbers are positive. Y equals 65,000. 859 AD X plus how many millions? Seven seven million eight hundred and ninety thousand. So there is Salma's equation. All right, let's do this one. The car has five hundred twenty-six liters of petrol and it uses twenty-five liters per kilometer using means it will go down he the car is using that means the petrol is going less uh, the more you go the more the petrol reduces so this is negative you started with this it is a positive number it is inside the car okay so this is y is equals to um 25 ne negative 25 x plus 526 so that's how you're supposed to do this you must know how to read so this is your y-intercept the starting the starting amount or the starting point this is the y-intercept whatever you started with is the y-intercept whatever is doing par for every par for each this is slope okay then you must ask yourself is this word positive is this word negative you must know that okay all right now here you've been given a graph for each graph write the equation of a line in slope intercept form so the first thing find your y-intercept so this is x this is y this is zero I always say those are the first things you do. Y, 0, X. Y, 0, X. Then label your graph. 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Those are your first steps. You put your 0, 1. You put your 0, negative 1. You put your 0, 1. Like that. Then you continue. After you put y and x. Now, the first thing you need to look for is your y-intercept. That means you go to your y-axis and you go until this y-line touches this line. It touches over here. This point. And you say y intercept then you label i say this point will always start with zero it will always start with zero the x of this point is always zero then what number is it at one then the next thing is to find your slope look for the next point your next point you can use this one you can use this one find your point you can use that one you can use that one. It's up to you. So you can do the slope formula. You can do rise over run. It is up to you. So me, I'm going to do rise over run. So my run is negative 2 because I went to the left and I went up 1. My rise. So this is my rise and this is my run. I started at my y-intercept. I went to the left 2 and I went up 1. So my slope is negative half. My y-intercept is 0, 0,1. Now, how do I know I'm correct? Because my line is going down, my slope will be negative. That's how I know. I can also confirm, okay? This is 0. Let me choose another one. Let's use this one. What is this? Negative 4, 3. So I have negative 4, comma 3. And I have negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2. So I can do x1, y1. x2, y2. Slope equals y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 y2 is 2 minus y1 is 3 x2 is negative 2 minus negative 4 okay 2 minus 3 is negative 1 this becomes a positive negative 2 plus 4 is 2 my slopes are the same do you see that so if you want to do this, it's fine. If you want to do rise over run, it is okay. It is up to you, whatever you want. Now, what did they say? I have found my slope. I have found my y-intercept. Now I need to write my equation. Y is equals negative one-half x plus one. Because it is positive. It is above zero. So that's why it's plus. And there is my answer. Okay. All right, so let us do this one. My slope will be positive. I already know this because my line is going up. I already know that. Here is my y-intercept. Okay, that will be 0, 0,2. How did I know it was 2? This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. 1, two three four one negative one negative two negative three negative four all right so there my y-intercept my y-intercept is zero comma positive two my next point is this one here this is my next point this cannot be a point because it doesn't cross the box it has to cross the box on the corner so I went to the right, two boxes, and then, so this is my run. My run is positive because I went this way, to the right. Then I went up three boxes. So that is my rise. 
then I went up. I went to the right, then I went up, three boxes. So my um, rise over run is three over two. So slope is three out of two. How do I know that? I'm going to confirm. What is this point? Zero, two. What is this point? Negative two, negative one. So I'm going to do my slope. Slope equals y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, x1, y1, x2, y2, negative 1, minus 2, negative 2, minus 0, negative 3, over negative 2, a negative divide a negative, a positive. 3 over 2. This answer matches my slope over there. So I know I am correct. You don't have to do both methods. But if you do rise over run, you must do this method to check. So I suggest just do this method. Well, do both to make sure your work is correct. Then you write your equation. Y is equal to 3 over 2x. What is my y-intercept? Plus 2. And there is your answer for the equation. And this is your answer for the intercept and for the y-intercept and for your slope. Okay? All right. My y-intercept here is negative. So this is 0, comma, negative 2. How did, I, how did I know it was negative? because it is below the zero. So this is negative one, this is negative two, negative three, negative four. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's look for my other points. I have a point here. And I have a point here. So I want to find the slope. Because I already found the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So which means, here is my answer for the y-intercept. My slope, I'm going to do rise over run. So I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to go down. So that's how I know my slope is negative, because my line is going down. I went to the right, three boxes, one, two, three. So that's my run, negative three, my run. Remember, it is rise over run. The run is down. My rise, no, I went to the right. Why is it negative? No, it should be positive. I went to the right. See, I went this way. So that's positive, not negative, positive three. Then I went down one, so that's negative one. So that's how I know my slope is negative. My slope is negative because my line is going down and you can see I found a negative number. Now let's confirm our slope is correct. So what are our two points? Let's use this one. Three, negative three, three, negative three. And let's use this one. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1. So this is x1, y1. x2, y2. Then slope is slope equals y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. All right. What is my y2? Negative 1. What is my y1? negative 3, minus negative 3. What is my x2? Negative 3, minus 3. So this becomes positive. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. If I simplify this, that means I divide this by 2. I divide that by 2. I should get negative 1 out of 3 or 1 out of negative 3 doesn't matter 
I told you where the negative. Okay. So, so that is one over negative three. Do you see that? Okay. And that's it. And that's your slope. And this matches this. It's the same number. All right. Then you write your equation. I'm going to write mine over here. Y is equals to negative one third X minus two. There is my equation. Okay. So in this lesson, you'll be expected to do everything I have explained. All right. Last thing. They will give you a story. They will ask you to write an equation, graph it, interpret the slope and the y-intercept, and use the equation in the story. I forgot to put a graph here. Okay, so let's write an equation. If I write an equation, let's read. A membership to the gym cost 25 per person in 1995. Very important. But this is my slope. I already know that because it said per person, slope. The membership cost has increased by an average of six per person. Okay. Now I have two slopes already. It was at 25, now it is at 6 more was given to this number. Let's continue reading. Since 19, for each year since 1995. So that means 1995, it was 25. 1996, it was 31. 1997, it was 31. And I'm going all the way to 2009. 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. See, you should know how to read. 31, 31, 31, 31. This is me thinking. As I was reading, I am thinking what is happening. So we started at 1995. We are going here to 2009. Okay? So that's 2002. 2003 is 31. 2004 is 31. And 5 is 31. 2006 is 31. 2007, it is 31. 2008, it is 31. 2009, 2009 is 31. So, 2005, it was 25 dirham per person or $25 per person. And then every year after 2005, since, 19, uh, since sorry, every year after 1995, the price went up to six dollars per person write a linear equation for the cost of the gym membership for one person since 1995 what is the cost of a gym membership in 2009 that's what they want to know okay so, what will be the cost of the gym membership in 2009? Now, you need to do this. Then we will discuss this in class. I just helped you thinking. So, I want to see what your equation is. Then you tell me what the slope means, what the y-intercept means, and then use the equation to answer. Okay? So we can talk about this in class the next time I see you.